Hello, hello, everyone. I am Kelly Blackman, and you are here with us at How to Win at Everything. Uh, I have my esteemed colleague, Laura Cobb, who is on with us. Hey, Laura. Hi. <laughs> so, as always, I'm going to start us off with my very, very odd and cheesy intro. Have you ever wondered why you struggle to find success or fulfillment or lasting happiness? It's probably because your default wiring is set to lose. The How to Win at Everything podcast looks at real people who have struggled with the same insecurities, fears, doubts, and expectations and found a way to succeed. Why? Their brains are rewired for success. We dive into their thought patterns to show you how to rewire your own brain to win at everything. So I am here with Dr. Laura Cobb. She, she always makes this face when I talk about this doctor thing. So Laura, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a switch around today, and you're going to actually be interviewing me, which I think is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, you didn't know, huh? <laughs> so before we get started, I want to make sure we can introduce you to everyone. So can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm a doctor. Give I'm a I'm a thinking doctor. Okay. Um, so um, I'm a counselor as well and um, by academic training. And um, I'm a life coach now. Actually, I'm an empowerment coach. My specialization is I coach high achieving academic and executive women who experience imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, I live near Chicago, just outside the suburbs and um, love and life. It's just getting bigger and larger every day and it's getting more grand and it's thick with saturation of love and gratitude. There you go. There you go. Now, I'm sorry. I want to make sure that you get to tell all of our friends here about some of your credentials, some of your background. Uh, what makes you the the person that we're listening to? G give us some of your lorism. <laughs> There's so many levels to that. Uh, well, I, I I know a little bit about a lot, and I know a lot about a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I spent some time in college. I I went to college for 12 years because I was afraid to grow up. Just some time. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Um, I studied a bachelor's and master's in, in sociology, and then I went straight through with my doctorate in child development and family studies. Mm -hmm. I moved over to Germany, and I figured out I can't write my dissertation all day because I'll go crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so while I was finishing up my last year, um, I just moved over to Germany. Uh, when I was finishing up my last year of my doctorate, I decided to start a second master's in counseling and personal services. <laughs> You, you were just bored, huh? <laughs> you know, I just, I just didn't have enough to do. So uh, running marathons and working, um, my then husband was an active duty soldier. And um, so it was a beautiful time. I lived there for eight years. I wouldn't mm -hmm. trade for anything. I um, was a career coach over there. I served as the president of the European branch of uh -oh. the American Counseling Association, family advocacy program manager. Uh, sure. for 22 army garrisons that oversaw the European footprint. So my clients were um, the supervisors, the managers at those individual army installations. Mm -hmm. And that would have been included whom? Oh, uh, which, oh, uh, the, the countries, uh, Germany for sure, Italy, Spain, um, Belgium, and uh, the Netherlands. Right, so and I, we're talking about their high-ranking officers, right? That That's what you're working with? Um, well, the, it was called the Family Advocacy Program, which fell underneath a program called the Army Community Services. So okay. um, the Family Advocacy encompassed family advocacy, new parent support, sexual assault, exceptional family member, and emergency placement care. So in underneath the Army Community Service umbrella was one program called Family Advocacy. Within that were those other programs that I just mentioned. So my my um, the managers who managed at the garrison level the installation level for the army were um, my clients, so to speak. Gotcha. Gotcha. I bought some right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, here, let me, let me just say, uh, you draw in quite a crowd. Uh, uh, you have uh, Jonathan, Bernard, Carmen, Bill, Adrian, uh, Maribel, uh, Ruthann, Nadal. Yeah, we, you got a lot of people who are coming to show us love today. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's your show. Well, okay. So we're going to call it that. I like to think of it as our show, yeah. but any money comes to me. 
any any money or any, any money i feel like <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's all community <laughs> so um so whenever you are ready Feel free. I, I know our subject today, we're going to be talking about, uh, I have the hashtag, I lead with love. And uh, I want to make sure we can get into some of this, uh, some of this sort of philosophical discussion about this. So whenever you're ready, doctor. Please call me Laura, just not Dr. Laura. Um, I was very curious when we were just, we just recently came into contact with one another to come to know each other. And I'm very curious in leading with love and the leadership I think people have different conceptions of what is leadership. Can you tell me a little bit about how you define leadership and how you envision it when you work hmm. with this? So um, I think it's it's not to make it too narrow. Uh, I believe that when it comes to leadership, what we're really talking about essentially are people who go first. You know, so it's a little bit different from. Uh, the idea of being in charge, of being in control, or being the boss. Leadership is about going first and making, and not only that, making a path so that people can follow behind you. So when we consider this idea about leadership, essentially we're talking about uh, the person who is going to build a path for people mm -hmm. behind them. Right. And so in, what in your best mind's eye, what does that path involve? And what might you clear out of the way so you're... Um, those with whom you're in, in, you're of your charge. Those with whom are of your charge, not necessarily in charge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That um, that you take the step forward. So, so what I what I typically look at uh, as as the journey, and obviously it's going to be a little bit different depending on uh, what field you're in. But essentially, the the basic tenets have to do with uh, making the way for others. So making them. Get clear in a path so they can be successful. Uh, in the family structure, it may be dealing with uh, some some um, you know some issues of family issues, uh, abuse or things that maybe your family members have gone through. Uh, you know, a lot of times with husbands and wives, with mates, you'll find that uh, when you marry into somebody, you marry into all their problems, all their issues. So, in my mind, being a leader, uh, whether you know whichever role you're playing as a leader. It makes you the person who says, let me do the first thing so that this other person can step into a role of being empowered. Right, right. So how do you how do you differentiate? I mean, first, what, what first came to my mind, do you think of leadership in regard to age? No, nah, you know, nah. not age, or... not sex, not any of those things, because mm -hmm. um, you can never, you know, not position a role in a job either, because typically leadership has to do with willingness. You know, it has to do with this sense of humility and service, yeah. um, because essentially what you're doing is you're saying, whichever is the best thing to do for the person who I'm with, the person, again, who who who's in your charge or the person who you care for, the yeah. person who you want to help, the, the, the thing that you want to do for them is clear a path so that they can be the best them. Right. And you just said care for. I was just thinking, um, I remember clearly when I was in my, my studies, there's a difference between caretaking and caregiving. Mm -hmm. not, not taking care, giving care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, that just really struck me that you're providing care, you're caring for, for sure. caring, for giving, for mm -hmm. giving, giving, for giving. I mean, for giving is one word, it could be two words. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering now that when I, when I, as I'm processing what you said, to what extent is it a, a selfless service? Not selfish. Well, selfish. Well, so I think it's going to depend on a person. For me, uh, if we're being completely honest, this is almost completely selfish in the sense that what I get off on is the idea of making someone else space. You know, like to me, that makes me feel like I'm doing the best thing I can do. And, and granted, it's it's still providing for other people, mm. but I I love the sensation of knowing that in the end, uh, if there's if I can do anything from zero to ten, I did it as close to ten as possible. Right. So, yeah. So that that <laughs> that's my that's my that's my my issue with trying to bring love to everything because I want to try to bring the best I can. Right. Maybe not perfection, but the best I can. And we're perfectly imperfect. 
and yeah. we're and perfect. Yeah. perfect. Uh, I like what you said with space because of my philosophy with coaching and counseling um, by trade, um, by academic training, is to hold the space for the client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily, it could be a colleague, it could be a family mm -hmm. member, it could be a friend, is that um, holding that space to allow the other person to be fully themselves. And that's mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, what right do I have to say that I know what's best for that other person? And sure. for me, that that means that I have to allow for them for that space for them to show up yeah. and tell me and let me know in whatever way they can. Yeah, that's in, in my in my coaching, it, it it comes up it comes up in a bunch of different ways. But really, what 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 I think uh, I try to do is to be as reflective as possible. So I can't tell you what the best version of you looks like. I, I can tell you if I see um, certain traits or aspects. You know, right. uh, my son's a really good listener. He's really good at reasoning. But I can't say, well, you should or you have to be ah. because that's not that's not my place. What I can do is try to see those things in him and mm -hmm. reflect them. You right. know, when it comes to my clients, I'm, I'm trying to see whatever the good things are in them and reflect them. And at the same time, when it comes to the different challenges, they're usually going to bring their own set of challenges. Mm -hmm. Some of them are things that they're conscious of, some things they're not, and, and reflect those too, mm -hmm. but not in a, um, this is you sort of way, more in a, this is the challenge sort of way. When you right. see your ideal self, this is the challenge you have to get behind. Right. And giving them space to, to be themselves. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you just struck me, this is one of my big pet peeves with um, the, the um, helping profession is that I don't like to shit on anyone. That for me, that's a curse word. And sure. um, and what's, who's, what's to say that I know what anyone should or shouldn't do? And should doesn't have, even need to necessarily be um, overtly verbal. Mm -hmm. But what I would do is, yeah, I would have done was, yeah. I suggest that you, and then there's the advice word, the A word. Who, who, as a, I mean, as a licensed counselor, I mean, if I don't give advice, right. I mean, there's a difference between um, therapy and counseling and social work and- mm -hmm. um, And coaching. Yeah, coaching, totally different. And so um, if I show up, if my mom used to say, well, she said, suit up, show up and shut up. I don't <laughs> say that part, I say share up, share up. smile up sometimes. Uh, although smile up means that maybe I'm silent and I don't like that necessarily because I have a voice, I've learned that is uh, challenging to, to own that. So sure. um, when you, when you're working with a client, how do you, I mean, it's, it's really, I, I mean, I don't know about you. I know, I believe that my clients know what they need. They might not sure. necessarily have the ability or the um, means to get there. My job is mm -hmm. to, to just hold that space. I love it. I love that you said that. And um, to, to get them to go wherever they need to be. So that takes yeah. a lot of listening. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, so for for me, I think a lot of times when we're working through stuff, I, I believe that most of the time we have the answers already. Mm -hmm. Like um, yeah. if I'm working with someone and their issue is is weight, because that's obviously a, a big thing. Does everyone not know that you have to burn more calories than you take in? You need to count calories. You need to eat less. You need to activate more, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets that. So then it's like, that's not, so even if you come to me and say, hey, this is my issue, that's not really the issue. The issue is by listening and understanding, you get to see the underlying stuff. Yeah. And to me, that's where, that's the job. Um, paying attention to someone enough to let them tell you where they need the help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with you. Um, it's like when, um, if a family comes in for uh, family therapy or, or a couple comes in with for couple counseling, the identified patient. Yeah. That's not the issue. Yeah. That is the either could be it could be the, the scapegoat. It could be um if weight's the issue, weight is not the issue. Yeah. Um, eating disorder is not the issue. Um, yeah. addiction is not the issue. Um yeah. anger is not the issue. There it's just peeling away the yeah. layers. For example, layers. what would happen if and then just and then not saying that what would happen if what would happen just continuing to not not yeah not poke not pro prod just a gentle mm -hmm. but yeah I'm gonna say a gentle nudge <laughs> no, no, poke like not other fight place I, I've tried to poke with my wife and I realized that she didn't like it she didn't like it <laughs> I tried mm -hmm. to poke with the wife and yeah and she said no <laughs> yeah there's there's no levels to that I've learned better yeah 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 that's hard do you can you recall 
in, I mean, this is like going way back because with counseling, I can have, there's my past, right? And I can say, hi, I see you. I'm not going to hang out there. It's, it's mm -hmm. because of who I am and just visit it. Mm -hmm. You and your best recollection recall when you started to realize like, wow, the way that I am, because we're trained literally as parents, we train our kids. We call it socializing. We, we train them. Um, so, I mean, can you recall from your experience when you started to realize and whether this, this is not working for me and how you shifted? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was going to be uh, so. <laughs> so for me, uh, I when when. I grew up with all the self-esteem issues and all the self-hate issues and, and all the things that a lot of us grew up with. And um, so I started there at probably 18, 19, I tried to commit suicide. I realized that uh, I, was, I was smoking and drinking and doing a bunch of stuff that uh, for me felt like a real disconnect from everything that I had learned, everything I'd known. And I remember I got to this really low point where I was thinking to myself, I need money. I'd be willing to kill someone for this. Like, I'd be willing to do something uh, that drastic to take money from someone. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, if there is a God, I'm willing to bet he hates me because, mm -hmm. man, I am the worst. And I, and after after coming to that point, I, 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 I kind of got into this place where uh, I, so I had a friend, Kelly, another black guy named Kelly, oddly enough. And, um, at a certain point we, we make this decision because we're both broke and he's like, Hey, I used to manage this McDonald's. We should rob it. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that's exactly what we should do. No, that's perfect. So at the time I'm smoking, I'm drinking, I'm high all the time. And I'm thinking, uh, so I, I, I get a gun and it's the morning of the day we plan on doing this thing. Mm -hmm. And I call this guy and I'm like, Kelly, you're supposed to be here. We're going to go do this. Now in my mind, I've made this, I made this plan. And I, and I, in my, in my head, I'm so down and I'm so out of it that I'm thinking to myself, I hope no one does anything to try to stop me because I'm at such a low point. I will just shoot. I will just shoot. That's where I'm at. And, um, it, it just so happened, I call him like three different times that morning. I'm like, come on, let's get this done. I'm, I'm, I'm set. I'm ready. Got my mind in a place. And eventually he calls me back and he says, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going. He's like, I feel like God gave me a second chance. Wow. And I'm like, you bastard. How could you? <laughs> like, yeah. you're, you're leaving me like God didn't give me a second chance. Like, I, 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 I want some of that, too. Um, I was living in, in slums, uh, west side of Chicago, rat roach infested place. It was, it was really, it was, I was really in a bad place. And, uh, what I realized at that moment is that I had to do something different. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, it, it just so happened that, uh, there were like several things that kind of came in at the same time. There was a, there was a, um, uh, I got a job. Like all of a sudden, uh, my parents who weren't the happiest with me, uh, <laughs> let me move in with them. Um, and I really started to do this search for meaning. So uh, I started off looking at uh, different religions and that sort of thing. Uh, I eventually did become a Christian. Uh, after that, I really started looking at this idea of meaning for life and um, what it really has led me to was this whole sort of journey uh, because that was like a turning point when I got to a point where I was thinking that I'm willing to do anything. Like I'm, I, I'm really don't, I've mentioned this to you before that uh, uh, a buddy of mine, you know, during that same period, uh, I'm so down and so out of it again. Mm -hmm. You know, we say, oh, hey, the guy, Jimmy, that we used to go to grammar school with, you know, his dad sells Coke. And my buddy is like, we should go over there and do some coke. And I'm like, yeah, that's what we should do. Yes, that's I, what I, I, I mean, and here's the thing. I grew up with my parents being into drugs. I grew up with my dad becoming a drug counselor. I grew up with my mom working at a substance abuse uh, yeah. house. So I know doing drugs is bad. <laughs> I know I've seen these people and I'm still like, yeah, who cares? Yeah. I, I'm down. Let's go do it. Just so happened, uh, serendipity, I guess, 
uh, we ran up on the curb and never made it to Jimmy's house. I'm looking at all of this stuff and I'm thinking, I, I get it. Like, it's that chance. It's that chance that Kelly got. Right. And uh, from there, I really, really start pushing toward trying to understand, uh, one, what the difference is. Like, what, what so many of my friends, I grew up in the projects, you know, so many of my friends were into drugs, into gangs. So many of them are dead or in jail or strung out and that sort of thing. And I really started trying to understand what the difference was. Mm -hmm. So that was a real turning point for me. Yeah, I mean, your the, your environment. And I, I there is a correlation. I'm not going to go academic on you. There is a correlation between um, life's, uh, socioeconomic status, environment in which you're brought mm -hmm. up, and, mm -hmm. and, and trajectory in one's life. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I was brought up, uh, well, I thought we were rich. I, we were on food stamps and, um, yeah. you know, I was on dehydrated milk and, you know, my there mom, one bag of Doritos and then um, like she'd get one bag of uh, like premium Doritos or whatever. And then it would be the generic and she'd just put them in the bag. Cause you know, um, yeah, um, literally white middle, upper middle class at, at, at towards my, my, when I graduated from high school, my parents were on welfare food stamps mm -hmm. and um, I thought we were rich. Yeah. And it's the environment. And how I mean, I'm so curious. I mean, you mentioned meaning and I wrote this down. Uh, there's a book, his, uh, Vic, Victor Frankel, he's the author, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a survivor of a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. And um, having that understanding and, and um, Ellie Wiesel is, is along with that. Um, he wrote a book called Night. And um, just having that sense of what's my meaning in that the most dire of circumstances having an understanding that yep. this life is more than me yeah. and the impact, the impact that you, that you, it sounds like that you knew that you were more than, than what was in, in your, based on your surroundings and what type of, um, what, did you know at that point that you were a leader? I mean, do you, do you consider yourself a leader, number one? And number two, at that moment, you can lead yourself into or out of or among whatever circumstances and buy into any of it, any of it. It could be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, so um, I would say, yes, I am 100% a leader. Um, now? Or uh, probably you then too, uh, because I think you can lead negatively also. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right, right. so, so I, I, I think I've, I think, um, I, it's funny. I was just talking to Catherine Sanderson uh, uh, earlier today, and she makes this really good point. Um, she makes this point that she didn't necessarily care about people liking her, so she's able to write these mm -hmm. books and things that that maybe may piss people off. Honestly, you know, it may be something that makes people mad, but she's writing to what she feels. And I think I've always been that 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 in that place where. If it's the right thing, in, in my mind, obviously, if it's the right thing, I'm willing to go for it. And um, so I think I've always been a leader. And I think people see that that confidence to go and think, hey, that is leadership. Uh, since since I've gotten older, though, I've actually come to understand, like, that's uh, that's a great amount of power. And that's a greater amount of responsibility that comes with it. With great power comes great responsibility. And there's a lot of responsibility I, I, for I, I, power. And it's so you easy. know what though? I, I like to say this with any power comes responsibility. Right, right. Because because it everything that we do, every every choice we make, and, and the choice itself is is our ultimate power. Anything we do has an effect on other people, other stuff. I was just my my stepmother sent me a thing today. I forgot his name. Um, Pr um Drew Pruitt. Um, I was just listening to the podcast. Phenomenal. Totally this is completely. Um, first of all. I can't make you feel anything. You made me so mad. You made me so angry. Whatever it is, I can set up the circumstance in which you might possibly be encouraged to feel that way. Um, if you say something like, Laura, you're a blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's, who's got the problem? I got a problem. Mm -hmm. Who's got the problem? You got the problem. It's not my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can choose. I try to teach my son this. They made me. If, if someone makes you mad, that's giving them power over you. You're you're telling them. You're like not overtly. But you're saying they're making you do something. They're not making you any do anything. You're choosing to react to react right. or right. Respond. to react is to act again. Okay, so right. you're visiting all of our, the baggage that I have. Okay, I can choose to say 
that's not my issue. Now, I, I, I can say blah, 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 in your face, or I can say, that's unfortunate you feel like that. Now you can be passive aggressive and condescending with the same tone, with a different tone. Well, that's, really, right. that's unfortunate you feel that way. No, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm sorry that you feel that way because I'm not sorry because I didn't do anything from my, my understanding. I didn't mm -hmm. create that. Each person brings what they have, all their baggage because we carry it with us. My mm -hmm. past, I can leave that and say, I understand that that's there. And so what I'm hearing from you is that you came from a place and you own and honor that place from which you came. It doesn't rule you. It doesn't have power over you. Yeah. So how then, if you were to interact with someone and they get in your face and they're all in the, how do you then shift and, and be of a sane, sage place where your mind is more of, and your, your gut is like, Ugh, and your mind is all, I don't have to respond in the manner that... that 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 person you can see that person is in a lot of pain and not pity. Like I feel sorry for that person. I'm mm -hmm. not going to pray about them. I'm going to pray for them. Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, it's, it's, it's been a process. Um, I fought a lot in school, you know, in, in that age, I, I was so angry. We were poor. I got picked on a bunch. Uh, even, even in my neighborhood where uh, in, in public housing, you have to be on food stamps in order to live there. Like, you know, but even among those people, people were like, uh, yeah, I'm going to pick on you for being poor. So yeah. I, I came from this area of, yeah. Uh, so I came from this area of, 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 of anger and that being the way that I handled so much stuff. And uh, there were multiple times where I guess I was getting the signal like, hey, you can't escalate everything angrily. And, and, and like, that's not going to be your win. And um, I remember uh, the the last time that I did it, I, I I was, you know, there was there was a considerable amount of drinking and drugs involved. But I remember I was uh, I was yelling at this guy. He, he was a friend of my friend. I was yelling at this guy, and I'm like, and 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 I was so angry. And I remember the police came, and I'm like, the police are here now. It's great. They won't let me kill you. Keep talking. I'm going to hurt you. And I remember. It was, it was, I had gotten so outside of like who I envisioned myself being. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm a nerd. I'm a smart guy. Like I sit around and read, like, that's my cool. happy place. Hey, talk. And for me, Jeopardy. Yeah, you, I love Jeopardy. Hey, I know oh, Alex Russell. <laughs> but you know, to, for me being in that place uh, really was almost like a, a warning sign, like to reflect on those things. I can understand now that I was in such a a, 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 a volatile place, and, and and really the energy is this: um, the the energy that I spent on those things were letting other people control me. And I I remember thinking so much about how how bad I felt about that. So when I think about it now, and and this is across the board, um, I don't like the idea of someone being able to push my buttons. So what it really led me to do was try to figure out why do you feel like that? It, and and this is through uh, uh, learning about uh, trauma, learning, learning mm -hmm. about um, uh, depression and anxiety and, and learning about those things, as well as going to therapy myself. Mm -hmm. I've been able to flush out so many of these behaviors that I learned as a kid and I used to kind of get through my world as a kid that really have no place right now, you know, uh, so go ahead. They don't serve. I mean, right. I'm, I mean, think about it. Doctors, do you go to, do you see a doctor? Mm -hmm. Wait, doctors need doctors. Um, mm -hmm. your coach, mm -hmm. Coaches need coaches. I'd be very concerned if I was working with, if I were working with a coach who didn't themselves have a coach. I'd be very concerned if I went to a dentist who mm -hmm. they didn't have their own dentist, because the dentist can't sit there and like, you know, on themselves, you gotta have, That's right. I mean, That's right. um, um I can't, I can't birth myself. I need to go to a guy who's <laughs> an obstetrician to give my own yeah. practice here. Can you give your own pr prostate exam? Probably not. So, I would not want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, nothing to do with that. Even right. so, I would be very concerned with that. And I love that. I think, and I was thinking about this just a few moments ago. I'm wondering the vulnerability that you're articulating. There's a, there's a, um, there's a, a challenge. There's a, um, there's a, a space, especially I would think with masculinity, 
Because mm-hmm. it's one thing for me to be an assertive, not aggressive, an assertive female. I'm very, mm-hmm. I'm masculine. I, I'm feminine in my, like my, 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 um, or, my, um, orientation, like I'm all girly and all that. I'm very mm-hmm. masculine in my communication style, depending on the circumstances. If I'm mm-hmm. a client, much more nurturing. If I'm all, don't get in my face. Um, I've learned to over time be able to dovetail that where I don't want to be right. I want to get it right. Uh, that's and my I'm, term. I love that. And I'm, I'm very much of the um, ideology where if I say we got to have a talk, mm-hmm. I want to thank you so much for what you've done and how much you've in, how you've impacted my life rather than we got to have a talk you did blah 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 no that doesn't work how about how about up, i'm an empowerment coach how about uplifting nurture mm-hmm. encourage and move it up and forward and out and pay it on forward so in not necessarily in our culture in the western culture how as a man do you navigate this semblance of for lack of a better word, softness of leaning into and supporting mm-hmm. rather than, and uh, obviously asserting yourself, like these are boundaries, this is not okay. It's easier for me, for me to say, this is what's not okay than to mm-hmm. say what's okay. To um, hold that that boundary to protect yourself and also to uh, allow your voice to be heard when for the most part, masculinity mm-hmm. is of a particular standard. Uh, it, it, that's a great question because, uh, it, 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 it's probably a much bigger challenge than we, than we ever really know. Um, we, we, we get a chance to, uh, everybody always like assumes that, that, that men are, are, uh, so are benefiting so much from masculinity that, that this is a, a trope that they want to stand behind all the time. Oh, when God. the reality is that, um, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think, so for me, um, uh, uh, and this is kind of also an answer to the last question you asked about, about, about like, how does this all come together? How does this switch over to this thing? Uh, for me, it has a lot to do with self-awareness. It has to do with gaining this emotional intelligence where uh, my, my my the guys that I grew up around, uh, the older guys, they said, hey, the best thing you can do as a guy, get as many girlfriends as you can. Now, yeah, yeah. And, and, and this, is a, this isn't an isolated thing. This is, this is the thing, you know, the thing. And uh, have, well, you know, like so. So growing into this stuff, what I got is that I can't rely on other people's reality to to frame my reality. I'm mm-hmm. from the projects. I had drug addict parents. Uh, you know, I, I have every excuse and every reason to say I quit. I drop out. I I don't I don't show up. I got every excuse. And if I was that guy, nobody would question it. Nobody would care. No one would be like, oh, but Kelly, we expect it. Nobody had that. That being said, for me, what comes across is I have to start changing up and making choices, which mm-hmm. ultimately led to me saying, let me try to show up emotionally like as a, as a full, complete human being. So when it comes down to something like masculinity, I'm very much a man. I'm very mascul- masculine. Um, I love all sorts of guy things. I love football and seeing people get hit really hard. Great <laughs> things for me. I also watched Andy the other night and I cried. I cried because that was darn good. Great. And to see that little girl have so much spunk, oh man, I'm gonna tear up now. Go and because I'm so much of a man that I can cry and I can emote and I can tell people how I feel. I can say that I love the idea of only having one woman. Mm-hmm. I love that. That I I don't need to, I don't need to. To to, <laughs> I don't need to do peeing contests to express my masculinity. I know, right? Oh my and, god! And, and the reality is that that is still somewhat of a rarity uh, among men because we don't we we're we're at a point where um, we don't necessarily know what it is to be a man. How this do you navigate that? How do you navigate? I mean, well, so so I have I have these principles that I live by. Mm-hmm. Um, that this idea of leading with love says that in every, so the ultimate power I think we have is our power of choice. Because if you think about it, um, how much stuff can you really control? You can say, I'm going to go to work today and there's a pandemic and no, you're not. You, you can know? Say that, but do you? 
Right. I mean, so two frogs on a log, two decide to jump off. How many are left on the log? Three. They decided. They, they decided, but they didn't do. They didn't do it. I'm gonna. They, I'm gonna. But Wait but you know it, it it makes the point though that that we're we're it kind of in this in this place where we don't understand where our real power is. So my power isn't in having a bunch of sex or a bunch of women. Not the sex is bad or anything, guys. I'm not I'm not disparaging sex, but I am saying that the. <laughs> <laughs> but I am saying that the reality is that that's not where your power is. Right. Uh, the power is in choice. Mm -hmm. And for me, I want to try to normalize this idea that my choice, I lead with love in every choice, in every situation. So now what happens is instead of me saying, when I'm in a group of guys, and this always gets really awkward, when I'm in a group of guys and someone's like, wow, look at the rack on her. And I say, because obviously I, I, I'm a heterosexual male. I loved her rack. I thought it was nice. <laughs> but what I say is, what I say instead is, hey, you know what? She's look, she does look really nice. However, let me just tell you, this is just my experience. I've realized that there is so much more value in getting to know this woman rather than using her for an object. Mm -hmm. and, and across the board, you get a little bit of a... Do you know what the rack was made for? Breastfeeding. Well, let's not get ridiculous now. I mean, it was I mean, just, I mean, we all like it. We I mean, I can look at a woman and say, wow, she has very nice breasts. I mean, I can say she's got a nice rack. I don't play sure. on the side of the street. And you do, that's great. I'm like, have at it. Have at it. I'm just not, that's not my thing. I mean, sure. Um, I can look at a woman. Yeah, she's hot. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean I'm a lesbian. And it, it, are, go for it. I just not my thing. I can look at a dude and say, yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can still be, I can still be committed. Yep. I mean, when my husband, when my, my ex-husband, that's not why we divorced. Um, that, there's a whole nother, that's a whole nother. <laughs> whole nother All right, um, we're going to do another show for that one. No, right. When um, he'd come home and someone hit on me, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Cause that's why I got you. That's what it validates. Validates why I'm with them. I wanted to know when someone hit on him. Hmm. Yeah, I'm that secure in myself. Yeah. And yeah. I don't I, just, oh, You know, I, it, it, it's, it's an interesting thing though, because so much, so much of what what we're doing is trying to get this this validity or this legitimacy from the outside world and i feel pretty good with me you know so i don't necessarily need to have uh i don't need to have extra women i don't need to have i don't need to have a lot of money i don't need to have all these other things for me the value is and the one power that i have and again that's the choice that's the choice that's the thing I hear often is that um, I'm going to keep this as as, as uh, G rated as, po as possible. Right. <laughs> that, um, you know, you're, in regard to uh, interacting with um, someone regarding the possibility of procreation, if I may, you can you can um, navigate that and I'll read underneath that that um, you're only as good as the last person you're with because the next per next person you got to get to know them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so great at this. Okay. What, what, what did you, why are you not with your last partner? And um, you're with me now. So um, it's about negotiation and compromise and communication. Sure. Yep. I mean, does that make sense? You're mm -hmm. only as good as your last partner. Sure. Well, so I will say this, though. I, I've been married for a long time. So maybe it feels a little bit different. Oh, right. if, <sighs> well, so here, here's kind of where, where I end up at. I, 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 about five years into being married to my wife, I told her, "Hey, just so you know, just so you know, I don't, I don't need you anymore. I want you now." Totally different pair of, paradigm shift. Yeah, like it, it's a little bit different in the sense that where where I'm coming from now is I feel like a a whole human being, or at least as much as I can be a whole human being. And you are are now in addition to me, not supplement. You're a compliment to me, not supplementing all the places where I feel negative and the places where I feel needy and that sort of thing. If anyone ever quotes to me, you complete me, Jerry Maguire. That's ridiculous. I don't want to come to a relationship half of me. Yeah. How about I come to fully myself? Yeah, because that's what the dependency is. You can't yeah. me. I want to be whole. If you complete me, then I'm not even halfway there. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Like, what about? Maybe I'm like an eighth of the way there. You complete me? Then how the heck can I, I if I can't, this is it, this is it, it sounds cute, fill my own cup first and nourish others from the overflow. If I'm not fully myself, I can't nourish others. Yep. I mean, yep. 
it's easy to say than it is to, to live. Uh, and then let, we'll let, let, let me ask you this, Laura, because I, I want to make sure we get into uh, love as a topic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, how do you define it? Oh, well, you got Sternberg's triangle theory of love. I'm, you you want to go there? You want to go to college? Look, you're, look, you're, 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 college. Give, give me the, give me the doctor. Yeah. Uh, give me the well, doctor, there's, Laura. <laughs> there's different, um, Sternberg's tri triangle theory of love. Imagine an, an isosceles triangle. Isosceles means they're equal degrees. Uh, Thank you. Because yeah. I, I, I obviously didn't know. Um, I barely made a D in, in general. I totally know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So <laughs> you, have, you have, you have intimacy, which is emotion. You have uh -huh. passion, which is the physical. Uh -huh. And then you have um, what, what I consider the friendship um, platonic. Uh -huh. So there's seven different one, two, Okay. I wish I, uh, you know, just keep humming. There's, there's, you can, imagine a Venn diagram. Uh -huh. Imagine a Venn diagram. I can't believe, I can't believe after 12. I, damn it. Bring it. Okay. Now this is a testament whether or not I learned my stuff. Uh oh. Okay. Gonna see if it was worth it. It's a Venn diagram. Who are we watching? We got some people here. All right. So here. Okay. There we go. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So we got intimacy, passion, and commitment. You can have. Not you. One could have. I can't believe I'm doing a, a lecture here, but I should do this. Yeah. Okay. So here. Uh, okay. So here's passion, right? That's just um, the physicality. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, you just, it's like, it's, um, dang it. Um, goodness gracious. Um, that's just the passionate part when you're into, uh, an, uh, you're just starting off in the relationship. All right. So it's pretty much. Okay. Is that Mary? Uh -huh. Can you, can you read that word? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you have intimacy, which is. Uh-huh. Emotion. Let, 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 let me stop let me, you. Let me, let me, let me, the definition. The, the definition, you, I yes. can't define it. It depends on the circumstance. I love my mother. I okay. love my mother. I have commitment and I have intimacy. I'm not uh -huh. with her. I love you. I don't have passion. I'm barely intimate because I just like get you know get to know you. Uh -huh. then, um, yeah, okay, I'll hang around for a bit. So that's friendship. Okay, so um, I can be in a one night stand and that's passion. That uh -huh. I, I, I'm so in love with this person, and you know when you get in a relationship, it's all butterflies. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. And you're just all those grab it. hormones are kicking around. Yeah. That's, yeah. But you're committed. Um, you can right. be, I have just recently LinkedIn is amazing. I've never felt more connected to people in my life than now. Um, and unfortunately with the, with the pandemic, um, I have so much more intimate relationships with people I've never met. I'm sharing more of myself. Certainly no passion. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm, well, okay. I'm, but but now I gotta ask you again, though, because for people who, for example, stay together for the sake of the, of the kids, there's mm -hmm. commitment. They're living separate lives. There's no passion, intimacy. They're not sharing. So for you to ask me, you're asking an academic. Come on, you want a dissertation? I can't uh, no, this. no, because here's what I've been finding. Right, uh, I've been asking people this for probably ten years now, and no one ever gives me like a anything that's solid it's always a very abstract thing and, and and not that it's a wrong answer just that there's really nothing to say like prove prove what love looks like right i love what you just said that okay best movie ever contact jody foster matthew mm. mcconaughey he's mm -hmm. a spiritual guru he's not religious spiritual he's my number one uh jody foster she's a scientist researcher astronaut um she wants it's mm -hmm. all research scientist fact okay she is all about quantifiable facts that tangibly you can reproduce and see. Right. He is more of the abstract emotional intimacy that is not tangible. That's the warm, fuzzy stuff. Her father dies in the beginning of the movie. And um, literally, she is all about the, the astronomical, mathematical sure. science. So he asks her, well, how do you know what love is? So, well, so you, can, you just know because you're a researcher. And that she goes into explanation. So he asks her, did you love your father? And she said, yes, of course. Prove it. Prove it. You can't prove love. It's a feeling. Love is an act. You can't tangibly put your finger on it. You just know it. Okay. So those let me, concepts. Well, well, let me ask you then. Uh, uh, let, me, let me give you my, my definition. And I want to see from the academic Dr. Laura point of view. Tell me, tell me, tell me what you think. 
I, I'm saying that love is is a construct. Well, well, yeah. So the 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 love is a construct, but I'm saying that that construct is the desire, willingness, ability to give the best thing you can to something or someone to someone really outside of yourself without needing something in return, without desiring, without wanting something in return, right? So, so, so in that sense, I can show an act of love. Now, you may not be able to measure uh, what I can do, but when I'm talking to you, like just as a regular human being, and when I'm, if I'm talking to you and I pick up, oh man, Laura seems to need a shoulder to cry on. Um, what do I give you? Now, it comes down to, do I have that shoulder to cry on? And if I do, I want to offer it to you. If I don't, am I really showing you love? And to me, like that idea of trying, the, the idea of leading with love is this thing where whatever the best thing is I can give you, I want to give it to you. It's an I want to give it to everyone. Love is but, an act. Love but but here act. is that but is that is that abstract? Is that yeah. is that because I feel like that's a very tangible thing. There there's According I can't say you. well I can't say what that act would be, but I can say that for me I've given that act. Yeah, I'm doing you know what I mean? Best. Yes, I t- I'm get I'm, t- I'm getting that. I'm uh, doing the best that you can with what you have within that con- context and mm-hmm. um, within within that context for that person. For example, the golden rule. I don't believe in the golden rule. I believe in the platinum rule. Do unto others as they would have done unto themselves. And that takes listening. I, I, um, let's say that I'm of a particular religious, I'm not religious. Uh, let's say I'm a particular religious um, affiliation. And you don't know that. And you treat me, you, you, what you believe is an act of love. That's not my understanding of love. I might be sure. that it completely rude and, and discriminate, discriminatory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That means that I have to actually show up and listen to to have like what you described that you're you're leading with love. Mm-hmm. That's an act of love, and you're mm-hmm. leading. You're holding space for them. You're willing to mm-hmm. listen and allow time for them to, and you're leaning into that mm-hmm. relationship. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm giving that person value. Like right. you're valuable. I don't need to know you. I don't need to. You don't need to be giving me something. I don't need to be able to benefit from you. You That's and it, you you have an intrinsic value that. It's just, it's there. It doesn't matter. In my mind, God created you and you have that value because you exist. Right. And to me, like that starts to be a, a, a point where we can start to differentiate our, our activities. Because when I'm on LinkedIn, uh, like when I'm doing these shows, I, I get people that are like, oh, you should you should smack a commercial in between and you should do some of this and that. <laughs> and, 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 and don't get me wrong, I, I get it. There, Money isn't a bad thing in and of itself or anything right. like right. that. But, but my goal is to impart this sort of idea, this understanding, where where the best thing I can give you in this show is Dr. Laura's information, is is you know Elaine uh, Jacquez is uh, information about communication. You know, those are the best things I can give you to me because those things are so. It, it's really about two things. It's about being emotionally aware in and of yourself. Right. Because I have to understand what I can offer. But then it's also about an- another person having enough value for you to be able to make space for them so that now if I can give you something, uh, if I can help out. Now, I also have heard you because you have value and I'm paying attention. So now you can actually receive this good thing from me. And to me, those that those are like how you maximize on all the tenets of love to create mm. something. To create something that, in my mind, becomes a better world. You're and, an innovator. Sorry. You're an innovator. Uh, maybe, maybe I like to think of myself you're as just a person a who's going to do their do the work. <laughs> a visionary in the sense that you're navigating. You're a navigator, a visionary, innovator, and in that you are um, creating or pathing an alternate way of being and offering uh, for that people might not be aware of. And you're offering those who have a voice and want a voice to be heard. That's, that's the hope, right? That's the hope. That's, 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 that's the job. There's a quote by Toni Morrison that I absolutely adore. It's regards regarding to children, but I, I believe for me, at least this is so, this is, this is a capstone of my life. I believe it's relevant for all is that when you show up into the room, when I show up in the room, do your eyes light up? And I see that you're you're allowing that space for people, that you're allowing people sure. when, when they show up, that your eyes light up and you see the value in them. 
that they're inherently, inherently, yes, yes. unconditionally of value, and you're you're a, you're a conduit. You're, now, are now a pe you are a pedestal in which you're allowing others, taking one off from their knees, taking their hand, lifting them up, and placing them in the world that they can be seen because you see the light. Uh, now, now here's what I think is a beautiful thing about that. Now, now I'm I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy, <laughs> and mm, no, 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 because. Uh, here's the thing. This isn't this isn't something that I'm the only one who can do this, or I'm doing something super special. Uh, there, there's this, this parable about you know this master. He leaves he leaves his uh, three servants, and each one has a certain amount of money uh, to use. And and the master, when he comes back, his expectation is that you've used, or he's that each one of these guys has used whatever money that they've had to do something worthwhile. Yeah. And I don't want to be sitting at the end of my life feeling like I had 10, I had $10 and I never tried to do anything with that. I hid my $10 under the, uh, under the rug and sat. My idea is that I want to use my $10 to try to make it as much as possible. You can't take it with you. Right. Now here's, here, here's what I think will happen. Um, and this is, this is my philosophical sort of viewpoint of this. Uh, my company is called BE Consulting, and it stands for Butterfly Effect, right? Because, um, and, and I think I told you about this story recently. Um, me and my wife are on our way to work. Uh, I'm on my way into the job. She's driving me. We are, we're having this big knockdown argument. Uh, we're all angry and everything. I leave. I go to work. She leaves. She calls her mom. And her mom agrees with me. So now her and her mom are into it. And now the mom is angry. So when the mom gets off the phone with my wife, she's yelling at the kids before they go to school. Now the kids are angry and upset. And one of the kids is so upset, he gets into a fight when he goes to school, gets suspended, comes back home and tells the mom everything. I hear this story and I realize that me and my wife's argument has spurred other people to do stuff. That's right? It. You can't that, make anyone do or feel anything. You can set it up where they could. That's where what you said about choice comes in. That's what right. But, but but keep in mind now, if if there's a um, the 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 chaos theory or the butterfly effect has this this it's this um it, it it seems abstract because it's such long math and it's such it's such a long way away. But you know the idea of this butterfly flapping its wings in like the Philippines or something ends up being you know a tornado halfway across the world. Mm -hmm. The idea is that if you can do a positive thing, right? If you can do a positive, if I, if I can use that one power I have, the power of choice, and if I can use that power of choice to say I'm going to do something, I'm going to lead with love, I'm going to give you something better, and then all of a sudden, instead of instead of my wife being the person who says well, I'm so angry at you, mom, because you blah, 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 blah. She says, she talks to her mom and she's like, oh, hey, I love you, mom, yada, yada, yada. And then instead of the mom going to the kid, like, oh, you little bastard, yada, blah, 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 blah. Now she goes to the kid and she's like, hey, you know, I love you, kid. And the kid's day is different. The kid who gets into a fight at school with them, is it, their day is different. It's so so my idea is that there's the, the change that we're all looking for, the change that we trust in, into politics, into other people, into all these things, that change can literally be us. It can be literally be us saying, and on these little bitty, tiny, small micro situations, I'm gonna leave this with love. You're huge. I mean, that's like getting a, um, a dozen roses and what on your anniversary, your birthday, Valentine's Day. I'd rather get a I'd rather get a dandelion every day or a little post-it note saying love you rather than a nice big old card on whatever day. I mean, sure. it, it, it's the dailiness, the dailiness. And the fact that you, you, you recognize that's the thing is it's so hard to see when all this stuff happens so on a grandiose scale. It's like a, yeah. Candle. yeah. You know, it's yeah. Like a, and it yeah. makes you feel powerless. Right. And that's the thing when well, you mentioned, um, you're just a man, people call, I mean, an ex extraordinary woman. I'm not an extraordinary woman. I'm an ordinary woman who makes extraordinary choices every day. And if you put on me that I'm an extraordinary woman, I'm not letting you off your, you, that puts me on a place where you don't have the capability to be. That's right. That's right. You have the capability to make extraordinary choices on a daily basis. Right. You put me up and, there. And any one of us, any one of us, actually, I think that's, that's my ask. I think that every one of us should try to be that person. You know, you don't have to be perfect. You don't even have to be great. But when you're thinking about when you're thinking about 
the situation you're, that you're in and you go into that into that automatic mode you mm-hmm. know that hey let me just handle it the way i would want to handle it because my emotions my you know uh uh yeah that behavior thought feeling you know triangle when you get that when a new situation comes in stop for a second and think what is the best thing that i could do in this situation and i promise you when you do it it changes your life it changes your life it changes it changes the way people see you it changes the way it changes the way you show up in the rest of the world i yeah. mean it is it is it is definitely it's a difference maker when you when you have that shift and i know exactly where i was at about 25 years ago because i'll be for the next next week on friday right right um, um i remember exactly where i was at who i was talking to what i said and i realized that I don't feel good about myself saying this and it's not Mm -hmm. about the person. And it's only out of response of that. I want to get my way. Mm -hmm. I want to be right. I want to get it right. And uh, that said, uh, what is your, you mentioned call to action. Mm -hmm. What is your call to action for our audience here now? And those who might hear this in future minutes, hours, days, weeks. Sure. So uh, there's a couple of things. Number one, uh, this is an extremely personal thing. This is an extremely private thing. There is no way for me or anyone else to rate what you're doing or not doing. So this has to be a connection between you and the rest of humanity. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, at least my idea of a call to action, is to actually assess. Assess where I am, what I'm doing. Um, The easiest thing you can do, look at your relationships. If you're a person that struggles to have good relationships, if your relationships are toxic, if your relationships, I mean, because you're you're typically either going to draw people to you that are the way you are or repel people away from you who don't like the way you are. Mm-hmm. So the first portion is really to become self-aware. Uh, once you start to become self-aware, it, it like to me, that's that's the first thing. Start asking yourself questions like, how are my relationships? Do I get along with people? Are people drawn to me? Are people repelled by me? Because that's typically going to tell you, you got some work to do. The second thing, uh, I want to carry this conversation on, like indefinitely, but definitely as we go into 2021, I want to, I want, I want to personally be more mindful and more connected. Uh, so I have uh, started up the hashtag I lead with love. I'm hoping that everyone will, yeah, I'm hoping that everyone will follow that hashtag. Easy enough, uh, you can just type in I, I hashtag I lead with love. It'll bring it up. You can click on it and say follow. Somebody put that in. The, somebody could. Somebody put that in the chat. I lead with love. Hashtag I lead with love. Yeah, you know what? That that should probably be a me thing, huh? So uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that every opportunity we can, we're representing this to each other because this isn't this isn't a me thing. This isn't a you thing. This is a everyone thing. We think. And, yeah. And and when we start to discover that it's not about us and that we can actually have an impact on the whole world, it, it, it kind of motivates you to try to be better. Are you an impact coach then? Uh, sure, I guess. There, You know, we, we have so many coach names. <laughs> yes, I'm an impact coach. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, this did not just go down. Slam, bam. <laughs> yeah, this, this, just, this is like my energy. You don't like it? Yes. <laughs> I adore that. I didn't, this is, that. I didn't mean like I'm all that, like I came up with that. I just, it just hit me like an impact. It just hit me. You're an impact coach. Yeah. I want to, I'm going to definitely put that on my resume now. It, it, it doesn't work. Like I'm going to also have to define it too, because no one else is going to really know. Because you got to process and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Now you should. See, there I go. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not perfect. I never said I was and now there's flaws and all, and it's all good. How can people get in touch with you? So uh, I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, the show is called How to Win at Everything. So you can always look I ne- it, look that up on any of those mediums. I'm most active on LinkedIn and Facebook. So uh, please, if you, I-, I would say please share. Please share this, this please video. Share. Yeah, uh, please, please tag share. people in. Because the idea is, honestly, we want to try to change the world and make it better, y'all. So, uh, uh, also, and LinkedIn, I'm Kelly Blackman. You can always just look for me. I don't think there's too many of us. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, this was such an honor. And I'm so in, much in, and humbled in gratitude that you allowed me to um, finally hear your story. Yeah, I will. I think you did a great job. 
Thanks. I'm a, Alexis, stop. My echo. <laughs> she, my it's echo. Like it's time to go. <laughs> Alexis, stop. She came out. I was like, Alexis, stop. Um, this was an, uh, an absolute honor, and I'm humbled to be even part of your your in your vicinity. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, honor is all mine. Then bless, bless, bless. Well, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much, everyone who showed up tonight. Again, please follow that hashtag, hashtag I lead with love. Uh, also, please share the video. Please share the thoughts. Please share the understanding. Yeah. Everyone. The, the meaning. That's kind of, yeah, Your please message. share that. Uh, now, Laura, if you hang on, I'm going to cut us off of live and I'm going to play us. I'm sorry, I'm going to play us out with our intro, with our outro. See you, everyone. Ta-da!